God is good. God is good. Uh, and then there were some technical difficulties. I pressed something on the recording and so part of it was slanted. So we're going to do it again. Hallelujah. Good morning again to everyone. God is good. I love you, Lord. With all my heart, I love you. you today, Lord, lover of my soul, you are the one that makes me whole. I worship you, Lord, I worship you, you know how much I love you, I love you with all of my heart.
pick me up and you turn me around. Yes, bless us on solid ground. I love you, Lord. today Lord and Lord if there's anything that we have in our hearts that's taking that place of your love anything anyone any individual Lord we ask you to take it away we ask you to cleanse us take it away God we do not want to have anything in your place God we give you our heart afresh today Lord we love you Lord we love you we love you we want to love you with all our hearts all of our minds, all of our soul. Take our love, God. And Lord, even as you love us, help us to love the way you love. Not the way the world loves. Not to love someone because they're nice to us. Or to love someone because what we can get from them. But we want to love them like you do. Unconditional love. And so we thank you today, God. We thank you that we will, with your strength, love our neighbors, love our spouses, love our children, love our spouses, love our children. Unconditionally, Lord. And whatever the enemy has brought in our marriages, whatever the enemy has brought in our families to separate us from your love, to separate us, to bring that division between husbands and wives, or children and, and, and parents, we speak to it today. We call it demolished. It's demolished. We call it broken because your word says the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the seed. This is God spoken. Even right now, he spoke and he broke the city trees he has spoken his voice is powerful every attack against husbands and wives every attacks against our children is broken in the name of Jesus we decree and declare God reigns in our homes we decree and declare God is the foundation God is love therefore love is the foundation in our homes love is the foundation in our families and we call it done we call it done we would not accept what we see we would not accept what we hear but we would believe what the word of God says we confess this we declare it God is number one God is the foundation in our homes in our marriages in our families therefore love is the foundation in our homes in our families in our spouses life in our lives we give you praise and we say thank you father even as our children go to school today we thank you for our wonderful children those beautiful gifts that you have blessed us with we decree and declare they go forth in the power in the strength in the anointing of the omnipotent God no evil will befall them no plague will come near them God because you have already released your angels you have given your angels charge over them to keep them in all their ways therefore they are protected, they are covered by the blood of Jesus, and I thank you, Father. They are alert. Whatever is being taught to them, I thank you that they have the mind of Christ. They have quick understanding. They will understand every material that's given to them, Father. They will focus. They will not be distracted. We give you praise. We give you honor and glory, and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, my sister, I believe. Thank you. Hallelujah to God be all the praise. We give him the praise. We thank you, God. We just want to thank God. God's love is so wonderful, unconditional. 
And as children of God, we want to love like God. We want that unconditional love in our lives. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we're looking for the confession for our children today. Hallelujah. The children's confession is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 and 5. It says, thank you for joining us, Nisi. I am patient, kind, confident, humble, happy, and pleasant. Again, I am patient, kind, confident, humble, happy, and pleasant. This all speaks about love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It says it's not jealous. So if we're not jealous, we're going to be confident. It's not boastful, meaning we'll be humble. It's not easily irritated, not irritable. It, it means we are pleasant. And so this is what I want us to confess as you go out, children, as you go to school or work, knowing that you are a child of God, confess, because I love God and because God lives in me, I am patient. I'm not going to be impatient with others. I'm kind. I'm going to try to help in whatever way. The things I say will be kind words. I will be confident, knowing that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm humble. I'm not going to be boastful about maybe I'm smarter than anyone or maybe my parents are able to buy me better clothes than someone else. I'm not going to be boastful. No, but I'll be humble and I'll be pleasant. I'll not be someone that's easily irritated. I'll be present. Present. Why? Because the love of God is within me. The confession for us adults today is also taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, I am not jealous, boastful, proud, rude, or irritable. Nor am I unforgiving or selfish, but I am patient, kind, hopeful, forgiving, and faithful. Again, I am not jealous, boastful, proud, rude, irritable, unforgiving, or selfish, but I am patient, I am kind, I am hopeful, and faithful. 1 Corinthians 13. Hallelujah. So we continue today to talk about parents, husbands and wives, and what does God say about husbands? Hallelujah, one minute, let me get my notes. God says about husbands and wives. I'm going to read first. Ephesians 5 25 to 33 says husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish so verse 28 says I'm reading from the new from the King James Version so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself so ought men to love their own wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourisheth and cherisheth his cherish, cherishes his flesh even as the lord the church so as i said yesterday there's some individuals maybe they didn't have a father in the home to teach them what how to treat a wife to see how the father would treat their mother but when we come to know the lord i mean god has the whole package he is here to teach us in his word how we should treat our spouses and here it says as christ treat the church now christ in no way would um, hurt the body of christ we are his children, the body of Christ. He would in no way um, condemn us. He would no way say, because you have sinned, I'm not going to love you. I'm going to turn my back on you. No. He loves us unconditionally. So here we are taught, men and young men, this is good for you to listen to. When you, this, when you get married, you know how to treat your wife. We men, God is saying, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And it says here, uh, as his own body. Now, you would not abuse your body. You would not um, 
What would you do to your body? You would take care of your body. I mean, I've, I've heard some stories. I mean, it's so sad. We're in Christian families where the, the, the husband would go out and he would shop the best nutrients for himself and would not even think of his wife. That's not of God. The same way you would go get that nutrients for yourself to take off your body because you want to be healthy, that's the way you take care of your wife. Because it says here right here in Ephesians 5 verse 28, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. What you will purchase for yourself, you purchase for your wife. Another another girl told me, she said, um, my husband and I, we always arguing and because he go to buy his design and he's telling me his designer outfit is better than my outfit. Oh, mm -mm. That is not of God. That is not of God. You don't go trying to outdo your spouse, trying to look better than your spouse. He said, I look better than you when I dress. That is of the flesh. And we need to crucify it. The word of God says here, love your wives. Cherish her as you cherish your body, as you take care of your body. So men, men out there, who's not doing this? We got You got some work to do, my brothers. This is not condemning you, but this is what the word of God says. We, you, he wants you as men, husbands, to love your wife as you love yourself. What you would purchase for yourself, you purchase for your wife. If you would not, if you think it's in fear for you to wear a certain type of clothing, don't purchase that for your wife. Or you don't tell your wife to go buy that certain type of clothing. Or you don't give her an allowance that says she's not working, she's home. Well, she works because she's home, especially with the children. Working at home with children is even harder than working out of the house. Believe you me, I've done it all. I've done it both. Being home with the children and working out of the home. So, husbands, love your wives. Even as I say that, um, your wife may be home taking care of the children. That doesn't say when you come home, well, she home all day. I'm working hard. She also works hard at home. You need to also give her a hand in the house because you're taking care of your body. You want to make sure you have enough rest. You should help your wife also. Say, honey, I know you you are with the children I'm, I'm gonna take care from you after you finish with dinner whatever you give your wife a break and you take care of the children that's loving her as you love yourself the same way you feel in your body that you need rest she needs a break from that also so if we center if we do things based on the Word of God our life would be so much more enjoyable our marriages would be so much more fulfilling there'll be less strife what we need to think at all times, how would Jesus treat me in this situation, men? Ask yourself, men, how would Jesus treat me in this situation? What does the Word of God says? And if you don't know, you Google it. I mean, we could find everything on the net these days. What does the Bible say about husbands treating wives? And a bunch of scriptures would pop up. You don't have to be somebody that know the Word of God or be a Christian for 15, 20 years. You just Google that and it's going to pop up. And it says right there, Ephesians 5 verse 28 men ought to love their wives as their own bodies so if you're going out and you're going to buy some nutrients for yourself some builders some supplements get some for your wife also you want your wife and then because you say haha no you, you 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 make sure you have all of that for yourself and then maybe your wife she's at home and she's working and she's tired and she cannot be there to fulfill their you know duties towards you Instead of you come crying and like, what's wrong with you? You're so tired. I need it. You're not here to help me. You're not here to fulfill my need. No, honey, what can I do to help? And then you start looking. If she's tired, let me go get her some builders. Or maybe you could call her doctor, whatever. Vitamin B is good to boost your energy. Go get some vitamin B for your wife. Whatever. Look in ways in which you could build your help. The same way you would take care of your body. If you feel weak and tired and you know you're going to go get some builders for yourself, sir, young man, husband, do the same for your wife. It is so easy. I mean, it, uh, the Word of God has so many principles there. If we only follow them, life would be so much uh, better. Let's, let's try it. Okay, nourish and cherish. Cherish. How do we cherish? Mm. Uh huh. Some men cherish their cars more than their wives. Mm. They spend money on their cars, getting it whatever new out there to get that shine and they take care of it and they polish it. You know, don't make sure you go in my car with no food. No food in my car. Don't scratch my car. Be careful how you sit in the seat. Be careful how you open the door. If we take that same energy, man, and put it on your wife, can you see how many years younger she will look? You take that same to make sure she looks good and you go and you purchase the same way you spend money in your car, you spend on your wife. So let's think about it. Am I putting my car before my wife? What would God say about that? 
I know some of you haven't seen it this way, but that's how it is. The word of God said, cherish, cherish, take care. I know there's some men, they, they, what well, the car is, the little babies, they, you know, you can't do anything to mess with the car. Likewise, you may have in-laws. Uh -huh, Lord is, the Lord is talking right now, not me. You may have in-laws that's just picking on your wife and saying this and that about your wife. And what are you doing, Mr. Sir, husband? Are you sitting and chiming in with your in with your family members, whether it's your mom, your dad, or your sisters and brothers about that? What they're talking about your wife? That's not cherishing your wife. You may say, well, she's wrong. Oh, yes, she may have made a mistake, but you do not sit and condone with them talking negative things about your wife. You talk to God about the negative things. That's not cherishing your wife. The Bible says here, cherish, cherish, honor, my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. Cherish even as the Lord the church. You think the Lord goes, uh, uh, like, okay, an example. Job, the Lord said, Have you considered my servant Job? And the devil said, It's only because you, you have the hedge of protection around him. That's the reason why he's not sinning. And the Lord said, I give you permission to only do so much. God had never, at no time, sat with Satan and spoke negatively about Job. And you may say this doesn't relate, but it relates to sense. He said to God, oh, Job is only doing this because of some, because of that. And God said, I boast in Job. So as husbands, when someone comes talking to you about your wife, what should you do? Okay, thank you for letting me know. I'll, be, I'll take care of it. End of conversation, I'll discuss it with my wife. And if they continue, you know, sometimes we misunderstand. But let me take it up with my wife. Cherish, you are there to protect your wife, not to be sitting with your family members and pulling your wife down. She is your body. She is your body. She is a part of you. You need to cherish her. Even as Christ takes care of the church, God does not go speaking negatively about the body of Christ with the enemy. He doesn't do that. So let us be careful. Cherish her. We are one. The two coming together, we are one. So you are there to protect your wife. And even if your wife is making a mistake, you go talk to her and you pray through it together. But do not go talking about your wife. What that have causes disrespect. When those family members meet your wife, they treat her in a certain way. Do that. God is saying we should not. And again, let's look at what love is. We just read that. Okay. So, and your wife may have made a mistake. You do not go discussing it with your family members and they talk and they talk and they talk. If you really love your wife, you will forgive her and it ends there. It says, love is for, it's not, does not keep record of wrong. Okay? Love never gives up. Love never loses. It's hopeful. Endures through every circumstances. All circumstances endures. So as husbands, that's what our God expects of you. Likewise, wise, your husband may have offended you. You talk to them, you ask forgiveness, and you move on. You do not hold that against that individual. That's what God wants us to do. So love, we said today, is the foundation of our marriage. We want to declare that. And I think I, I would encourage you every day, declare that over your life. Love is the foundation of my marriage. Why? Because God, God should be the foundation as women and men of God. And if God is the foundation, he says, love is of God. And everyone who loves God is born of God. Beloved, let us love. God is love. Therefore, if God is the foundation, then love is the foundation of our marriage. So, because we love, as our confessions say, I am not jealous. I am not boastful. I am not proud. I'm not rude. I'm not easily irritated. I do not keep a record of wrong, meaning I'm not unforgiving. And I do not demand my own, meaning I'm not selfish. I want this regardless of what's going on in the family. Look, I want this pair of shoes and I got a wedding to go to and I got to look good and I, and I want and I want. And so the family has needs. And so we, the husband or wife, we have to look about the needs of the family before ourselves. If we are at walking in love, we would not be uh, selfish, demand our own. We would not be a keeper of wrong. Be unforgiving. Your spouse may have hurt you. You would not be unforgiving, you forgive. What about jealous? Jealous or boastful? 
there may be a spouse let's say the wife she may be a manager in a company and because she she did higher education maybe she has a, a master's or whatever and the husband probably did not just have a um, associate degree or didn't just did a um, high school just have a high school diploma now you would not as a man and I've seen this where these places where cases where the wives are in has a job they were their manager and the husbands are jealous of the wife you won you work together see her as a, a comp to compliment you do not be jealous and then there are some wives that are boastful or spouses because you are in a better paying job or because you've went to 40 years school and you have had higher education you boast and you flaunt it in front of your spouse or in front of his friends that is not of God whatever you have and some of you you marry these individuals knowing well they, they, they did not have a master's or a doctorate and you you accepted them for what they were so you do not go in a marriage trying to change that individual you need to go back to school you need to you know if you suggest it and they feel they don't leave it do not be banging and hitting and then you, you you're just making the marriage very unhappy whatever you have do not be boastful see it as God giving that to you God has enabled me to get this job that is paying better than my husband don't flaunt it uh, you the man of this house if you the man of this house show me your petty cash that you bring it home that doesn't do nothing my money take care of the bills and my money and my no the two are one you here to help each other so love let's look at the word love we do not love like the world we do not look at this the, the, the TV soaps or whatever all those stuff we look at that does that should not we should not pattern our lives from what we see in the media from what we hear our lives should be patterned from the Word of God it should be from the Word of God therefore whatever we do love is is there any jealousy in my life is there any th type of boastfulness any pride proud do I have a proud spirit? Am I rude? My husband is talking. We're with the company, and he may have used the wrong tense, the wrong verb, with a, with a noun. You don't correct him in front of people. Oh no, that's not right. He made a mistake. You just overlook it. Behind doors, you say, "Honey, so do not correct your husband or wife in front. That is disrespectful." You're not cherishing that individual. You're exposing them to the world, to your friends, to your family members you need we need we all need to be careful your husband may slip up so what oh he embarrassed me we all embarrass each other nobody's perfect so if you embarrass you do not confront and you make it worse to embarrass him or embarrass your wife so let's remember I love this man I married this man I married this woman therefore I'm not jealous of of if she may have you may have married her and she may only have a um, high school diploma but she's gone back to school and she's she's enhanced her life or he's gone back to school celebrate see what he has done for is an accomplishment of the entire family either of you husbands or wives, none of us we should be jealous of each other we should not be boastful we should not have a proud attitude well hmm when I marry you, you was a no go. You were nothing. You you come from a family that's no no no. Don't throw that in their faces. You whom God has made you there to compliment to help. You're not rude. You do not get irritated because he may be slow in an area or your wife may be slow in an area. Do not be irritated. You help that individual. Uh, not selfish again. Demanding its own. Unforgiving. But we are patient. Let's say, I am patient. I am kind. I'm hopeful, I'm unforgiving, and I'm faithful. I'm faithful. That's loving each other the way God he desires us to love each other. He wants us to love him with all our hearts. He wants us to show for that love. Like Christ loved the church, Christ does not criticize us. We make mistakes and Christ doesn't push us to the side and say, oh, you messed up. I don't love you anymore. No, oh, you embarrass me. Oh, the things we do in the name of Jesus, huh? The things we do, sometimes as parents, we do things, we see requests, and we do things and cause our children to question the God that we serve. Hmm. As I say this, let's be very careful, fathers and mothers. There are times when we get ourselves so involved in activities at church, in six and eight different ministries, or I mean, 
all right five different ministries and you're neglecting your spouse or neglecting your children and then because you're so busy always at church not there to provide for your children your children start saying what kind of God is that 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 you can't talk to my mother or my father to be home to spend time with me what kind of God is that so here because of our attitude or what we're doing we've neglected our family and you've caused them to question God or to, to turn their backs on God because if God is so loving why is it that he can't see my mother spending all her time at church and she's not cleaning the house she's not cooking for us she's not there for us she's not there to help me my dad is there all the time going all over the world preaching and he's not there for me to help me now whatever we do do not let us come to the point I'm not saying we should honor God but there are some individuals we are in ministries or in departments things that God never called us to because we want to have a we want to look good in the sight of man and everything somebody asks us to do we jump ahead without asking God yes you want to serve God but you have to know what God is calling you to do do not get into a bunch of ministries and say I'm serving God and your house is unclean you're not cooking for the children you're not there to help your children with the homework your children is going to school with homework undone what type of testimony is that and so here we have our children start turning their backs on God because they cannot understand what kind of God is that? That my mother, God can't tell my mother to be home to help with my whole work, but she's always at church. And some of the ministries you're in, God never told you to be there just because people ask you. And some people may not agree with me, but that's the truth. So let's stop. Let's stop. What, how is my love life? Am I doing the walking the way God wants me to? Am I a man pleaser? I'm in the situations. I'm doing things because I want to please the pastor. I want to please the bishop. I want to please. No, we are not men pleasers. We are God pleasers. And our family should not be neglected. Our children going to school without homework done because my mom was at church and she couldn't help me is not good. It's not a good testimony. Think about that teacher who's not a Christian. What are we portraying to that teacher? Mm, I never plan saying this, but somebody need to hear this. So love is the foundation. Being there for each other. When I want to be, there's a woman's seminar coming up, and I want, or the woman's meeting coming up, and I want to be there. I like to be at a woman's meeting, and your child has a need help, and the child tells you they have this book report this due tomorrow. Mom, I need help. Well, listen to me. You ain't gotta try home because I want to be at this meeting. I love the woman's meeting. Self love is not demanding its own it's not bad to be a church it's not bad to be in a woman's meeting but prioritize what is more important you could go to the other woman's meeting and many of them they have recorded they have a recording record what's going on you could get that cd that whatever of that meeting so again again what what how is my love being portrayed? Am I representing Christ? Is the love of Christ flowing through me? Or am I standing there preventing my children and standing in the way of, of my children loving God because of my lifestyle? So again, my family's foundation is love. That should be our confession. What is love? Love is not jealous. It's not boastful. And as, we, as I say these things, let's look at ourselves. Is there any jealousy in my life? Jealous against my husband, my, my children, my, my spouse, my wife. It's not boastful. I'm not pride. I'm not boastful in, because of the blessing I have, the occupation, the salary I'm bringing in, bringing in. It's not proud. It's not rude. It's not irritable. It doesn't mean irritated easily because you may be advancing in area and your wife or your spouse may be slow. It's not unforgiving. It's not selfish, wanting its own. But because I love God and I have love, I'm patient. I'm kind. I'm hopeful. I'm forgiving and I am faithful I pray today that this would help us all as men and women as husbands and I say those of you who are not married young people let this be your guide start feasting in the Word of God that when you become a man when you're married that you would know how to treat your wife again ladies when you're married again the, 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 the father the, the, the man is the head of the household and we as women we should be in submission that does not mean a man would rule over us and treat you like a rat or a flow cloud. no he treats you with respect but then you also respect your husband do not go over him do not talk over him when he's in group and he's talking he makes a mistake do not correct him in the front of people in the midst of people that's not it you may be a said um a straight English uh, major and you know all the verbs and the adjectives and the nouns do not correct your husband you married him remember you know what he was before you marry him 
do not go correcting them. That's a uh, you, you hurt the men so much when a woman we pull them down or they're about to make a decision and they're, they're standing in the store and they're talking and you go over them and you talk over them in front of the people in the store, the person. That's very embarrassing for a man. Well, he doesn't know what to do. Well, wait until you leave and then you could tell him, but do not, let's work. These are things I see happen so often where a woman, well, he always so quiet and he's always standing there and, and I got to take charge. But before you, when you said yes to that man, you know he was quiet, you know he was reserved. So you look for that quality, but then when it comes to leadership, uh, you, you, you're impatient because he's a little slow with us concerned. And then sometimes we are a little too, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not on top of things, you're a little too laid back. Ask the Lord to give you that push so that I would be in the place where God wants me. Remember your children are looking at you. So if you're a laid back man, and if you, um, and I said again, if you're not in the place, the wife has to step up. But ladies, when we step up, let's do it with wisdom. Let's not do it in a, in a um, bossy way. Bossy way. No man appreciates, appreciates a bossy wife. It turns him off. It, 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 I mean, but in spite of that man, if you have a bossy wife, pray for her. And I pray that sometimes you all need to come together, get some good counseling. Because over the years, you may start off well, and then things just get out of place because of these things that step in. So remember, whatever you do, your children are looking. If you have a son that sees the mother is always talking over the father and telling him what to do and bossing him around, guess what? That young man, that child would grow up and end up looking for a woman just like that. And how would you feel for a woman to be bossing your little son around when he comes in? And like vice versa, your daughter see you are bossy, she would be, oh, this is the way, this is how I see my mother treat my dad, so this is the way it's supposed to be. So she'll be bossing the, the guy she's going to marry or the, the boyfriend she has. And sometimes because of her boy's bossy attitude, there may be a good man out there that may never marry her because it's like that bossy attitude, I don't want that. So as parents, as husbands and wives, let's love God's way. Let's, let's be patient. A man, he may not have had a father in his life to teach him how to come up to that manly role. So together, you and your husband, get into the word. Honey, let's see what the word of God says about being head. How we should act in situations. And quietly, in your own private time, you could encourage your husband. If he goes there, let him make that mistake. Let him make that. Do not shout at him. Do not embarrass him. Do not boss him. Do not tell him he's stupid. Don't do that in public. Don't. It just takes away that all of that from that man it, it belittles him it just it's not good we do not need to do that so whatever we do let's do it in love let's do it in love so i want to read so before i go i'm gonna go for go over a confession for today for adults i am not jealous boastful proud rude irritable unforgiving selfish nor selfish but i'm patient i'm kind i'm hopeful I'm loving, I'm forgiving, and I am faithful. Hallelujah. Now, as I said, we're leaders, and I'm going to read to you from Leaders' Promises, Leadership Promises for Every Day. As parents, we're leaders, and our children are looking at us. And let's remember, whatever we do, they are going to pattern. We may tell them to do one thing, but they're looking at our lives. So as leaders, today is September 5th. This is a devotional for leaders, and if you are, you could use these principles for yourself as a family, as a husband and wife, because you're leaders in the family and home, and also on your job, if you're in a supervisor or manager, you can really use it. It says, our comfort allows us to comfort others. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we comfort ourselves are comforted by God. I'm going to read it again. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So God comforts us to comfort others. Our comfort allows us to comfort others. God promises to comfort us in our troubles, then asks us 
to share that comfort with others. We are to empower others with the power God gives us. Let's say that. I am to empower others with the comfort that God has given me. You could type that in. I am. I am going to comfort or I should comfort others with the power God gives me. Leaders who empower others offer these gifts. So if you are there to empower your, your children, these are the gifts you offer to them. Accountability. That's the first gift. They help others keep their commitments to God. As I said prior to today, I shared about us having a mission statement for our family. A mission statement is simply having a statement saying, as a family, what do we do? What, what What's our goal? And if you're a Christian family, one of the things I encourage you, one of your main things is to honor God. As a family, we would honor God in the way we speak, in the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we dress our conversation, our lifestyle, the friends we keep. So you have that as what, as part of your mission statement. Your children would know, okay, if we're honoring God, this is part of my, our mission statement. Therefore, we would not, certain clothes I do not wear because we already have, this is, we will honor God by certain, the way, certain attire or the certain friends. We won't keep certain friends because we want to honor God. And, and so, as we have our mission statement and whatever else we need to come in, I would love God with all my heart, soul, and mind. I would obey the words of God. I would honor my parents. So accountability, when you have that mission statement, you have that goal as a family. Uh, the leaders empower others with these gifts, the gift of accountability. They help others keep their commitments to God. So you would help your children in keeping their commitments to God. Affirmation, affirmation. They speak words of support and encouragement. That's a gift. You speak that over your children. Speak that over each other, husbands and wives. Affir affirmation. Assessment. They evaluate others' progress, offering an objective perspective. You know, you, you look at your children, how they're doing in school, how they're doing on the job, how they're doing overall in life, and you give an assessment. Advice, that's another gift. They offer words of wisdom, counsel, and direction. That's what good leaders do. Words of wisdom, counsel, direction. Words of the affirmation, speak words of encouragement, support. Good leaders do that. Admonishment, they lend words of caution, rebuke, and correction. It says there, I like you said, did it say they give? They lend words of caution, rebuke, and correction, and we do it all in love. Another gift of a good leader is that he gives to those in a, uh, that he leads, they give tangible resources to help them reach their goals. Tangible resources. Acceptance, they provide unconditional love, regardless of the recipient's identity. On the job, at home, unconditional love. Application, they help others find places to apply and practice what they learn so you said you love God with all your heart you love your neighbor to yourself so you encourage children to show that love to each other you encourage the children to, to show respect even as you respect each other as husbands and wives so I hope that this was a blessing this is from the John Maxwell leadership Bible our comfort allows us to comfort others so let's remember men and women of God husbands the Lord said treat your wife as you treat yourself. If you are going to go out there and look for builders to build yourself up, go get some builders to build your wife up. You come home, you know you're tired and you need a break, give your wife also a break. Help her out with the children. That's thinking about her that you think about yourself. And I guarantee you, if we work this way, man, we're going to have some blissful marriages. Again, do not pattern your life from your neighbors. Do not pattern your life from your friends, what the media say. The media doesn't know what real love is. The media doesn't know what agape love is. We should pattern our life from the word of God. If you were not in a home where a father taught you how to love, where a father taught you how to treat a wife, the word of God has it that I said. You just Google, how should a man treat his wife? You find so many scriptures. God is here to help us. We have no excuses, guys, no excuses. I hope that this is a blessing to you. Let's remember that God loves you. And whatever we do, we should do it in love and to others. Remember, if we love someone, we'll be kind. We'll be forgiving. We'll be thoughtful. We'll be helpful. And we will be faithful. We'll be loyal to that person. We will, again, you're not going to be 
if you cherish your spouse you're not going to be talking down your spouse with your in-laws talking negative things about them mm -mm. that's not the way you cherish your wife cherish your husband you take care of them let's pray father we thank you uh, thank you words of affirmation are a big one yes yes we thank you thank you for sharing Lydia Lord we thank you for your word today Lord, I thank you because you said you, 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 you've seen how the enemy has been coming into our homes and, and marriages has just been in turmoil. Some marriages has just been going through one argument after the argument, divorce after divorce. And you said, this, does not, this is not my plan for my children. But many times we get caught up in the things of the world and we listen to the advice from people who do not know me or we listen to advice from even people who claim to know me god is saying but they're not giving you the advice based on my word so whenever someone gives you an advice check my word do not run to go with it make sure this is what my word is saying so father help us as your children we would come to your word for your wisdom your direction your strength your help and help us to walk in obedience at all times help us to walk in love help us to make you the foundation of our worlds the foundation of our homes the foundation of our marriages help us to love unconditionally like you do father thank you for your strength because we know god we can and we will do all things through christ who strengthens us you have released that power you have released it to us and so we receive it today and we say thank you god thank you for teaching us how to love thank you for loving us unconditionally we give you praise honor and glory in jesus name amen so i encourage you as you go out today remember we are teachers we are leaders god is expecting us to be that leader how do i treat my wife how do I treat my husband the way Christ treated the church? Let's look into the Bible, what it says. Wives, honor men of God, cherish your wives, honor her, treat her as Christ treated the church. Women, honor your husbands, respect them. We don't talk down to them in the public. We don't, you know, don't talk them down. We build them up. We are here to build each other up. We don't compare ourselves, thinking we're better than each other. We are here to build each other up. Remember, our children are listening. They said, children, learn what they learn. You may tell them one thing, but they see your word. They see your actions, and they will pattern their lives according to our belief. And we as parents, we are responsible to God. We are leaders. Let's ask ourselves today, what type of leader am I in my home? What type of leader? Am I like Christ? Am I a leader? Am I leading the way Christ would have me to lead? Hallelujah. And if there's a situation in your life, And you may say, this is impossible. No, the spouse I have, you don't know her. You don't know him. Uh, this has been going on for years. God specializes in the impossible. Come to God. Maybe you may need to get some counseling. Whatever. You may need to put aside your plate a day or two and get in some prayer and fasting. Some things are broken. Some things are generational. But when you come to know the Lord, it should be broken. Okay? You see something repeated in our great-grandmother and our grandmother. And same thing like her mother no do not say this in the name of jesus father it stops right here the box stop right here my husband is not going to be like his father or my wife because he knows you and if you have a spouse that does not know the lord we pray for their salvation when you confess what you want to see what you know god desires of your spouse hallelujah oh thank you jesus thank you lord let me bless your name glory to god mm. We're going to sing of a song, Miracle Working God. Mm. And some of us, as I said, our situations may require a miracle, the hand of God. Let's remember God specializes in the impossible. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. volume is down. encouraging word and as I said many things that I said we already know it but it's just a reminder God just wants us to make sure that our marriages are held together by him so share it on your page share it to a friend 
to share the word. It may bless someone today. Yes. God is a restorer. He's a restorer. There is no marriage that's too far gone. You may be walking in a marriage that appears to be dying. God is going to bring life. He's going to resurrect that marriage. But well, let's treat each other with love. Love conquers a multitude of sins. Love conquers. Regardless of what's coming away, you love like Christ loved, unconditionally, and see God work. He's a miracle, miracle working God, miracle working God. Nothing is too difficult, he's a miracle. Yes, he is, miracle working God, yes, he is. Nothing is impossible, he's a miracle working God. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm. He's the healer. He's the restorer. He's the deliverer. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. See yourself, your spouse, walking in the fullness. Receive the miracle from God. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm a supernatural word in God. Receive it in Jesus' name. Whatever miracle you believe in for your family member, your children, receive it. Miracle. Nothing is impossible. He's a miracle working God. Miracle working God. Yes, he yes. Nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible. He's a miracle working. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Father. We worship you. Yes, we praise your name. We exalt you. My God specializes in the impossible. So bring your pain. Yes. Bring all your brokenness to God. He's going to work it out. Yes. He's a miracle, God. Nothing is impossible. He's a miracle working God, I said, miracle working God, yes, nothing working God, he's a miracle working God, hallelujah, miracle working God, yes, yes, wonderful working God, difficult for my God, hallelujah, miracle working God, yes, yes, wonderful working God. He's a miracle working God. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name and we thank you, Father. We thank you for the marriages that are transformed today. We thank you for life. We call forth life in those marriages that may seem dead. We call forth life. We call forth love. Unconditional love in the name of Jesus. The enemy would not have our marriages. We decree and declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for joining us. Let's go forth today. Continue to spread the love of God. Let's confess, my foundation, the foundation for my marriage, the foundation for my family is love. Be blessed, love in each other. Give each other a compliment. Let them know how much you love and appreciate them. Thank you for joining. Share this video. Share it with others you may never know whom this video can bless today. Thank you again, and we'll be back tomorrow. Take care. Bye.